you all welcome back to vite e shikshana program i dr sasmita mohapatra is here to take the classes from the module 2 of microwave and antennas that is from the chapter microwave network theory and micro passive devices let's start our third class so in this third class we are going to discuss the properties of its parameters from microwave network theory Okay. So last class, what we have done, we have seen how to represent one input device in terms of the S matrix. So we have just got the knowledge regarding the different ports and the different parameters of S matrix. Now let us see what are the properties of this S parameters. So basically, there are five properties. so going with the first property as you can see on your screen so it is s matrix is always a square matrix of order n cross n for input network and its elements are complex quantities second property it's a phase shift property of s matrix then the third property is diagonal elements are zero for perfect matched network and the fourth property is S matrix is symmetric for a reciprocal network, and the fifth one is S matrix has unitary property for a less lossless network. Now let us discuss all the properties properly, and let us try to understand what is the proof of all these properties, and what does what does this signify really? So, coming for the first property. S matrix is always a square matrix. So we know what is a square matrix. So a matrix which has the number of rows is equal to the number of columns is known as a square matrix. So here also when we take one S matrix, so very simple, the S matrix is a square matrix. So here also the number of rows and number of columns are going to be same. So we are just writing one S matrix. and the number of rows and columns are going to be same now how it is how many number of rows or how many number of columns it is n cross n so if you have two ports then the s matrix is going to have the elements 2 cross 2 okay two rows two columns total it gives us four elements so similarly if you have n rows or n port then we have n rows n columns and in that case the number of elements in this s matrix is going to be n cross n right so for a n port network the s matrix can be given as n cross n and its elements are complex quantity so already i have told you when we are considering one s matrix all the elements the s parameters individual s parameters so if you are considering they are associated with magnitude and as well as they are associated with phase so when any parameter is associated with magnitude as well as phase we can tell that it is one complex quantity we have the quantity in terms of a complex quantity so if it is this i am writing one example for two port network so as i told you we are going to get 2 into 2 for s parameters so it is s11 s12 s21 so first one shows your row second one shows your column and s22 so we have four elements four elements in this s matrix so it is a two cross two matrix square matrix and each of those element is going to be one complex quantity which is going to have a real part as well as one imaginary part coming to the next property it's one phase shift property very important for understanding so what does it gives you the phase shift property at any given frequency so the frequency is supposed constant and for a given position of reference plane now when i tell reference plane i would like to show you this microwave device so you can say it is one n port network i have four ports here so this is a junction where my web guides are connected this is called a junction so this portion i have shown you in the first class this is a junction now my reference plane can be 
with respect to this plane or it can be with respect to this plane okay so if we have like this uh, some, a certain input network then the given positions of the reference planes the elements of s matrix that is we can write it as s i j so i is any row or column if you are taking as i and j have definite values so all these values whenever we find out all the parameters of one s matrix they have definite values now if the frequency is changed, the operating frequency at which the wave is getting propagated, if the frequency for the wave is going to change, then obviously there is some change in the S element, elements of the S matrix. That is one condition. Or else, if the frequency is constant, suppose the frequency is constant, there is no change in frequency. But there is a change in the position of the reference plane. Now, suppose this I am taking as my reference plane and I'm considering this is my junction. So at this, I'm considering my port one and port two and I'm, I have got certain S parameters. Now, suppose the position of this junction is going to change. I have shifted it to right or left. Okay, so this junction, this junction you can see. So if it is shifted right or left way, we are going to find out the device or the junction. And then we are finding out the S parameter. Then obviously, even though the frequency is made constant, but since the input, width, suppose this is my port one I'm considering and this is port two I'm considering, then if this junction is getting shifted, then the incident wave and reflected wave, how much distance they are going to propagate, that is going to change. Similarly, the incident ray and reflected ray at the port two, how much distance they are going to propagate, that is also changing. So since the distance of propagation is going to change, so accordingly what happens, the S parameter is going to change. So that is what is known as phase shift property because there is a change in phase. Now, because of that, we get the parameters are getting changed. So that is what is given. So at a given frequency, even though the frequency is constant, the complex S parameters of the network are defined with respect to positions of reference plane. So in that case, if the position change, then S parameter of the network are also going to change, okay? Now, let us see how it is going to change. So that is what I was trying to explain you with respect to the device. Now the same thing, let us see how it is going to change. Now here, suppose we have got, this is our device and the device is associated with this side is port one and this side we have got it as suppose port two. Now in each of the port, it is associated with certain distance, certain length of the transmission line. Suppose the wave is propagating here at port one for a distance of L1 and at a distance of L2. Now what I'm telling, suppose this device connection to this port or to this junction is getting shifted. It is going like this. This device is getting shifted, okay? Then what happens? The length covered by this or the propagation length for the wave at port one is going to change. Similarly, the propagation length at port two is also going to change. In fact, in this case, if the device is getting right shifted, then I can tell the length covered by the waves at port one is increased. The propagation length is increasing. And at port two, the waves are going to travel for a less distance. So when they have like this, usually we have the phase is given by beta L. So phase given by the wave is beta L, where beta is the phase constant. So here as L is going to change, so definitely the phase is going to change. Okay. So whenever there is a change in the reference plane, so there is a septic. So obviously, according to that, there is a change in the fit. So that is what we are trying to prove here. So here, as you can see, if you are taking the fits already the for the incident wave at port one is associated with phi one and the reflected wave is phi two. And if phi two, uh, sorry, the reflected wave at port one is again phi one and the incident wave and reflected wave is uh, related to phi two at port two. 
So if the device is going to change, that is the reference, uh, referenced plane is going to change, then obviously the phase phi one and phi two value is also going to change. Now let us see how it is changing or how we can find out this relationship. Now that is what if the phase is associated as beta, so if you are taking any at any port J, uh, suppose the length covered is LJ, then the phase is related as beta J LJ, as I told you, beta is the phase constant. Now, when we have a sifting, so with that, the S parameter, suppose is going to change, the new element we are going it, uh, going to get, we have right, written it as S i j dash, which is getting sifted by phi j, okay, with respect to the previous element, whatever the original element we had before sifting the reference plane. So this is my previous element. And again, this is my sifted element at port two uh, that we are getting. Now here we have got a condition. Now, in this case, if my port one, suppose I'm picking this side is port one and this side is port two, suppose here it is written as i and j. If i is not equal to j, that is we are having a relationship between these two ports, between port one and port two. Let us write S12. It is nothing but we are giving the input at two and taking the output at one. So if you have like this, then the phase difference is going to be phi j, the one single phase difference. But if I'm considering a single port, that is suppose port one, I'm giving the input that incident wave at port one, as well as I'm taking the reflected wave at port one, then in this case, the value of the sifting or the change in phase is going to be two phi j, because we have to consider the incident wave as well as the reflected wave at the same port. So it is going to be two pi j. So that is what we have seen. The new S elements are going to be like this. The, the first one is when I is not equal to J, that is one is not equal to two, that is for S12. And the second one is when I equal to J. So I can pick in this case, the example for S11. So if we are finding out the S parameter or the S element at the same port, considering the incident wave and reflected wave at the same port, then the phase we are going to get is double of that. Why it happens? Because the reflected, the wave has to travel for a double distance. So because of that, the phase difference is double in the same port. Now, suppose we had originally the S matrix, which is written as S. Now, after sifting, we have written the S matrix as S dash, okay, for an outward shift. We are considering for an outward shift. Then originally, if we had a relationship between S matrix and the output, the reflected wave and the incident wave as B equal to S A, then obviously it is also going to change with respect to the S matrix where B is written as S dash A, where S dash is the new S matrix with sifted S elements. Now, A is, you know, it is the incident wave, B is the reflected wave. Now, in that case, if you are writing the phase shift, so as I told you, if it is in the same port, that is, you are giving the input at the port one and you are taking it out at port one. So in that case, the phase difference and phi one is the phase shift associated with port one. So incident reflected, both are considered at the same port. So the total phase difference is going to be two phi one. Similarly, if you are considering only port two, the incident wave and the reflected wave both in port two, so it is going to be two phi two. Similarly, if you are considering port one as well as port two, a relationship between port one and two, then we have to consider the phase shift in port one as well as the phase shift in port two. So it is going to be phi one plus phi two. The same case, if you are taking it from port two to one, so it is again going to be phi one plus phi two, okay? Now, so the new variables that we are going to get with respect to this equation, we can write it as A1 is equal to A1, what is the previous value we had include uh, with 
e to the power minus j phi one. So when it is put one, it is phi one, and when it is put two. It is phi. So a one dash a b one dash are related to port one. A two dash b two dash is related to port. Now what is phi one? Already I told you it is the total phase shift which is given by phase constant. So you should remember that the phase constant beta is equal to two pi by lambda. Okay, for any wave propagation, propagating with a standard wavelength of lambda, so the phase constant is given by two pi by lambda. So phi one is equal to the phase constant into the distance covered in the port one side, and phi two is the phase associated with port two side, and that is equal to the phase constant in the port two and multiplied by the length in port. So accordingly, how we can write the equation for the changed elements or the changed value of the uh, incident and the reflected waves of the at port one and port two, we have to consider the phase change. So we can just write that v one dash, which is the new uh, reflected wave at port one, is equal to port one initial reflected wave into e to the power minus j phi one. Similarly, b two dash is b two into e to the power minus j phi two, where b two dash is the new reflected wave at port two. B two is the initial reflected port uh, wave at port two, and phi two is the phase shift associated with port two. Now, if we try to put it in one matrix form, then we can put it in this way, and we can see that these two values, the diagonal values, are e to the power minus j phi one and j phi two. The other two terms. We don't have, so it is equal to zero. Similarly, we can write for the incident wave also after changing. So a one dash and a two do a two dash are my new incident waves at port one and port two. In that case, they can be having a relationship with the initial wave, initial incident wave before shifting of the plane, which is a one a two. Okay. Now combining both the equations, how can we write our S dash matrix? So we can is well, the new S parameter. So if we will combine because we know that B equal to S into A. So we know that B equal to already we have got this equation B equal to S into A. Now combining both the S parameters for uh, the S matrix. For the reflected wave as well as the incident wave, if we we'll write it, then we can get S dash. That is the new S matrix is equal to the matrix associated with the change in reflected wave and the original S matrix and the matrix associated with the change in incident wave. Now, taking all together, the matrix can be written like this, where two phi one is the total phase difference. At port one, when the incident wave reflected wave both are at port one, and this is my S one two, which gives my input at two, output we are taking it as one. So the total phase difference we are getting phase shifting we are getting is phi one plus phi two, and this S two one, which is my input at port one, output we are taking at port two, is going to be changed by phi one plus phi two. And finally, if the incident and reflected both the waves are at port two, then only port two, if we we'll consider, it is two phi two. Okay. Now this gives me the phase shift property of S matrix. So whenever there is change in the reference plane, so accordingly the elements of the S matrix are also getting shifted in terms of phase. Coming to the next property, so we have considered two properties now. So coming to the next property, the diagonal elements are zero for a perfect match network. Now you should understand what is one perfect match network. Now, if I'm considering a two-port network, already I have discussed in the last class also in second class. 
So if I'm considering a two port network and I'm telling that I have some incident web and I have some reflected web, suppose let me consider the incident and reflected ray both at port one. So when we are giving the wave at port one, this is my incident wave. And if there is a perfect matching of impedance between the characteristics impedance of the transmission line and the input impedance of the device, then all the signal is going to be delivered to the device. Now in that case, we are not going to get any reflection. And in that case, my B1 value is equal to zero, right? We don't have any reflection. So if the impedances are properly matching, then only we call that with a match termination. So in any network with a match termination, we have a properly matching condition. Then in that case, my reflected wave is going to be zero. Now, in this case, what will be my S parameter if I'm considering this port one? So giving at port one is my incident wave, taking out at port one is my reflected wave, which is equal to B1 by A1. Now in this case, since the impedance is properly matching, so we don't have any B1, B1 is equal to zero. So in that case, S11 is equal to zero. Similarly, if we consider port two, so here also, if we have a properly matching condition, the, you know, the, network, the port is properly matched, then we don't have any reflection. And again, S22 is also going to be zero. So in that case, if we'll write our S matrix, so which is S11, S12 for a two port network I'm writing, S21 and S22, if we are taking a two port network, then what does it gives us that S11 is equal to zero, again S22 is equal to zero. So rather I can tell my diagonal elements of the S matrix are going to be zero when there is no reflection from the port, okay? So that is not only stated here, the diagonal elements are zero for a perfectly matched network. That is, give the input at the same port, take the output at the same port, the output is going to be zero. So it is under perfect match condition only we are getting this output, fine? Coming for the next property. So this property is known as asymmetric property for a reciprocal network. Now, what is one reciprocal network? Already we have studied it in our class one. We have got a relationship there for the Z parameters and Y parameters in one reciprocal network. Now, once again, just I'll brief you out what is one reciprocal network. So, what is the reciprocal network if I'm trying to do? So, suppose I have one network something like this, okay? Just consider, no, no, no need of any micro network. I'm just considering any normal network. So suppose in this network, I have a voltage source connected at my input side. Now, if my voltage source, suppose I'm taking it as V1. And because of that, suppose I have a current flowing at the output, which is I2. Then if I'm giving V1, how much I2 I'm getting at the second port, if I'm giving the same V1 here, okay, I'm replacing the same V1 here, the same I2 has to be flowing in the previous port, okay? That is, you exchange the ports, you give input at one port, take the output at other port, or you give the input at the other port and take the output in the previous port. If you are taking the ratio or you are finding out the impact, it is going to be safe. So that is known as one reciprocal network. Now last class, uh, that is in class one, we saw that in a reciprocal network, the Z parameters and Y parameters are symmetric. That is, we have written there Z12 is equal to Z21 and Y12 is equal to Y21. We have proved, okay? Now here, what we are telling that the same thing for a reciprocal device, it has the same transmission characteristics, either uh, direction of a pair of ports and it's characterized by a symmetric scattering matrix. Even the S matrix is also here symmetric. That is, if you are considering the two ports are 
put i and put j, then s i j is equal to s j i. So how can we prove it that s i j equal to s j i? So finally, if we can put the, uh, we can prove that the transpose of S matrix is equal to S matrix. So you will take the S matrix for an input network. And if we can prove that the transpose of the S matrix is same as the previous matrix, that means what the parameters are symmetric. Okay. So let us prove it. Let us prove this and let us find out that the parameters are symmetric. So we want to prove that finally that the S transpose is equal to S. Now for that, we are considering the voltage. So these equations are already known to you. In last class, we have done by, we have got the S matrix for one input network. So this is my total voltage in terms of incident voltage and reflected voltage. Similarly, my total current <clears throat> in terms of incident current and reflected current. And repeatedly, I have told you whenever it is a current, we have to take care of the direction. That is why it is associated with a negative sign, current with negative sign. So we can have the incident and the reflected wave in terms of current. And we can have the incident and reflected wave in terms of voltage. This equation also we have got in the last class we have written in terms of this we have got. Now, the data matrix equation can be written for a relationship between voltage and current, well, the relationship usually we can write it in terms of impedance matrix, Z matrix. Now, this Z naught, the characteristics impedance square root, if we we'll go for the standard equation, so we can write it as uh, Z naught is equal to A plus B, where, which is also equal to the impedance one by Z naught A minus B. So once we have taken in terms of voltage, once we have taken in terms of current and we have written the equation. Now, if we'll take the normalization with the assumed normalization, we can write that the same equation Z naught square root equal to A plus B, which is equal to Z into one by Z naught A minus B in terms of Z parameters. Now, by solving this, doing the cross multiplication and then exchanging the right hand side to left hand side, we want to get our reflected waves together. So we have to just multiply. Okay, we have done the cross multiplication, did not we have multiplied with these things. And then we have uh, just uh, uh, kept our all the reflected waves together and incident wave together. So this is the equation. Okay, now B can be taken common from left hand side. So here we can take B common. So we will be getting this equation. I feel uh, you people are very much good with mathematics and you are aware of all these things. So U is the unit matrix. We can take U as the unit matrix. And uh, again, A, if we'll take constant, so it is again coming here. So where U is the unit matrix. So what is one unit matrix having unity diagonal elements, okay? And zero of diagonal elements. All the diagonals uh, elements are going to be one. Other than that, all other elements are going to be zero. That is one unity matrix. So we can write this equation in terms of unity matrix. After that, uh, we have already got a relationship between the reflected wave and the incident wave in terms of S matrix. In the second class, we have done it. So we can replace, we can compare these two equations. Okay, what equation we got just now, this is the equation. And what equation we have got in the previous. So we can compare them and then we can find out that our S matrix, if we we'll compare these two equations. Okay, so if we will compare these two equations, so we can write that this, this equation, we can compare with this equation. So in that case, we can write, this is the value which is equal to S, okay? So again, uh, we can write this equation as we can change this equation and we can write, this is the value of the S matrix, Z plus U inverse and Z minus U. So this is, my S matrix. Now for a reciprocal network, we know already we know that the Z matrix is symmetric. 
So what we can write for any reciprocal network when it is symmetric already, that means um, already we have proved in class one that Z12 is equal to Z21. So if we'll take that condition, so Z matrix is symmetric. Now for that Z matrix, if you are writing, then Z is definitely equal to Z transpose, okay? So putting that in this equation, what we can write is Z minus U transpose is equal to Z minus U and even Z plus U transpose is equal to Z plus U because Z matrix is um, uh, for a reciprocal network, Z matrix elements are symmetric. Now taking care or uh, taking the help of this equation, finally we can write the transport S equation as Z minus U transpose into Z plus U transpose minus one. So wherever we had a normal equation, no, in this case. So everything we have changed it to transpose. Here also, here also. That is the only change because Z matrix is symmetric. Now taking that, we can get, so that is equal to this the original one. So that shows what when we take the S transpose. So if you are taking the S transpose, that finally is equal to S since Z matrix is transpose, we got this two equation. So when SP, that is transpose of S is equal to S, that means what? Even if matrix is symmetric, so S uh, parameters are also symmetrical at the junction, okay? So this is the one more property of S matrix, that is S matrix or S parameters are always symmetric. So if you remember in class two, one place I have written S21, then I have written it equal to S12. And I told you we'll be discussing it in the next class when we are doing the properties of S parameters. So this is what is the proof. So because S parameters are also symmetric, so we can write S21 equal to S12, right? So quickly moving on to the next property. The property is known as a unitary property. Now you have to understand the property properly. Now we have two parts in this property and we are taking one lossless input network. Okay, lossless input networks. So the network satisfy the unitary property. The first condition gives that the sum of the products of each term of any one row or any column of the S matrix multiplied by its complex conjugate is unity when I is equal to J. So try to understand properly. So if I'm writing my S matrix, suppose I'm writing one, two cross two S matrix, S11, S12, S21, and S22. Suppose this is my matrix. When I tell I equal, to J, so which are the values? So if I'm considering my row and column, both are going to be same or we are considering it are the same for if we are considering, then what we are telling you write, you take S11, so S11 into S11 complex plus, if I'm taking this only this column, if I'm taking only this first column, S21, into S21 complex when you took it is equal to one, okay? So if you are taking I and J from the same column, so if you are taking the sum of the products of each term, so each term means here my column or my the column I'm taking it one column one, and in the one column, my two elements are there. If they are multiplied with their complex and then they are added, that is equal to one. And you add all the, for all the ports, if you have N port, you'll have N cross N matrix. So you can take obviously N number of elements. Now, the second part of this unitary property, what it gives, the sum of the products of each term of any one row or a column of the S matrix multiplied by the complex conjugate of a different row or column. So when I tell different row or column, so let me again write this equation. What do you mean by this? Okay, so suppose I'm writing again my S matrix, S11, S12, S21, and S22. 
So what I mean to say, if I'm taking two columns or S11 into S12 complex, okay, plus S21, two columns I'm considering into S22 complex when I'm taking that is equal to zero. Okay, so we are considering two different rows or two different columns. It is not the same column or the same row, rather it is two different rows or two different columns. And when they are multiplied, that value is equal to zero. Okay, now let us prove it. Let us go further and prove it. Now we have considered here a, a four port network. The number of ports here are four. And basically we know how to write the relationship or how to write the S matrix for one N port network with respect to its incident and reflected wave. So this equations already we have used, we can get it, okay? For four port, usually we will have B1, B2, B3, B4, and all the four incident waves are A1, A2, A3, A4. Now, for a lossless network, the total power leaving N ports the total ports is equal to the total power input. When it is a lossless, we don't have any loss. So we can take the condition that B n square, if I'm considering four ports from one to four, how much we have added together is equal to n square. Okay, now what is this n square? If I'll replace it, okay, in plus of B n, if I'll replace it, so B n is nothing but S n, into a n so in that way if i'm writing s n 1 a 1 s n 2 a 2 s n 3 a 3 a 3 and like this n at n port so s n n into a n it will take all the ports so we can have this is the equation so where we are taking all the incident waves together that is equal to this okay now if we are considering only one port that is the ith port is excited and all other ports are properly matched okay we are considering only one port then all the other ports are properly matched that is terminated then in all the other ports we can have our value a n equal to zero if it is n equal to i in only that port we have the incident voltage and we have the reflected voltage all other ports are properly matched. We are not considering them since the reflected voltage is equal to zero. So if that case, the ith port will give us a relationship where this is ai square equal to the same, same way we can find this is the equation. So that gives us that s n i square is one. So when we are writing s n i square is one, and we know S N I is complex term, so we can write S N I square is nothing but S N I into S N I complex. So, if we we'll consider this, what we can write S N I square already we have written one. Again, we are proving S N I square is nothing but S N I into S N I complex. So together we can write that S N I into S N I complex is equal to one. Okay, similarly, so this is the one we have proved when we are taking the same column or same row and we are taking the elements. Similarly, if we we'll take the elements from one row and one column, so the other uh, one row and the other, uh, um, the complex element from the other row or the elements from one column to the complex element from the other column. So similarly, we can prove it as zero, okay? So that's all related to all the properties of S parameters of one S matrix for one input network. And this is supposed to be a one very important question for the exam. Usually question comes represent the S matrix for one input network and state the properties of the S parameter. So you have to state all the five properties and yeah, depending on the marks, you have to go for the proof of the property. If the marks is more, then you can go for the proof of the properties. Or else if it is only for stating the properties, you can just state the property. Okay. So thank you all. And we'll be meeting 
in the next class we will find certain relationship between the s parameters z parameters and y parameters and what are the advantages of s parameter over z and y parameter when we go for one microwave network and then we'll be solving certain problems okay so thank you uh, see you soon